now we are in uh, open discussion events or sessions. My question to Nicola. Uh, Nicola, can you measure the impact of this exercise on the department pull-ups and uh, uh, if, uh, there's any uh, difference that you know what is the impact of uh, pelvic floor therapy alone, or you know you measure the impact you know with both exercise and pelvic therapy that. Subject expert, yes, I will get into that. So, um, so we we know that pelvic floor exercises are good to help the symptoms of prolapse. In our study. We um, excluded women with large prolapse. We do know that pelvic floor exercises do not cure prolapse, but they will stop it getting worse. Uh, and as our very esteemed colleagues have uh, mentioned, this is something which is equally applicable to women of all ages. So again, pelvic floor muscle exercises should be recommended as a first-line treatment for, for prolapse. Thank you. I'm Dr. Halida Arthur, and I'm a reproductive and epidemiologist. <coughs> Currently, I'm with Johns Hopkins University in the International Health Department, but I've been in Bangladesh for, you know, for majority of my life. Um, the reason I'm standing is to come to the MTK and Alberta University to do this study. And this is an immense benefit to the women who are neglected at this age in their household, bringing them up, making them visible, giving them attention, giving them priority to their symptoms has immense benefit to their well-being. We have done well-being assessment and, and you have seen improvement. It's not only because of the relief of the symptom, but also giving attention to them. And I can see that an agency could be created with this kind of symptom, where they are neglected in their own house. You know, they are dependent, they are looking after the children of their children, but it's not a very encouraging environment, and I see that this um, is an excellent opportunity for them to get attention. Um, costing and other things are not, it, it should not be cost, should be cost efficient in a way that one is the daily guidance from the paramedics and the physiotherapists. But also we can um, develop leadership from among, within the women. In many African countries, you have heard in the nutrition field, Mama Luminaire. So one Mama Luminaire can come, come in the picture and be the master among them. They can collect women who have these kind of symptoms, also guide them. So we can select from among the women, that, that would be very useful. But taking the leadership from among the women, would be an immense benefit to this society. And um, I would like to encourage all the organizations who are here, and especially the practice here, and then you can implement, because you are going to the field, you can implement. I think we must adapt this one and then move on to benefit these women. Thank you very much. It is proven uh, that it uh, has a success. So we need to. Uh, intervention for mass formation, <coughs> mass designation. Uh, it is possible at this moment to write the intervention. I mean, the GK may think about first uh, public designation to ICD intervention, and then link to the other areas. Uh, other areas. Thank you. I am Samia from Nairobi. I am 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 from Nairobi. I যেগুলো <laughs> 
অনেক উপকার করা যাবে আর ওই এইজ এর মধ্যে না থেকে ষাট থেকে পঁচাত্তরের মধ্যে না থেকে যেটা ওজিএসবি যে আপা বললেন যে রিপোর্টিভলি আমরা তো মনে করি যে নারী পক্ষের পক্ষ থেকে যদি স্কুল প্রোগ্রামে এগুলো নিয়ে যাওয়া যায় তাহলে কিন্তু এটা এটার সাথে বিয়ে বা সন্তান ধারণের কোনো সম্পর্ক নাই একটা বয়সের পরে কিন্তু এমনিতেই মাসেগুলি একটু লুজ হতে থাকে সুতরাং এই বিষয়গুলো কীভাবে আনা যায় আর আর মনে এটা নিয়ে অনেক বেশি ক্যাম্পেইন করা দরকার আমরা যারা মানে হেল্প নিয়ে কাজ করছি তারা যদি এই বিষয়গুলো নিয়ে ক্যাম্পেইন করি এবং গণস্বাস্থ্য কাছে আমি অনুরোধ করবো বা আমাদের মধ্যে কোনো সংগঠনগুলো আরও ছোট করে এই ধরনের প্রেজেন্টেশনগুলো শেয়ার করা বা অভিজ্ঞতাগুলো শেয়ার করতে পারলে আর ছোট করেও যদি এই এক্সারসাইজগুলো দেখানো যায় তাহলে হয়তো আমরা যারা ফিল্ড লেভেলে কাজ করি তার মধ্যে কিছুটা মেসেজ দিতে পারি এবং আমারও অনেক অনেক অভিনন্দন এবং জনস্বাস্থ্যের পক্ষে সম্ভব এরকম কাজ করে I am Dr. Jamalad Mohamed from CRP. Uh, this is a very good presentation uh, to inform all the people in the audience about the uh, efficacy of exercise, the measure of incontinence. Uh, I want to uh, provide my thanks to University of Alberta and GK uh, to conduct this study. Uh, I think uh, as a general people in Bangladesh always think that exercise is only recommended for people with diabetes. Now you study, open a new window that other group of people can be benefited from exercises. Exercise is very easy to do and hardly any side effects. And it widely can be commanded for different groups of people. Uh, so uh, the main problem to provide exercise to other people that uh, when people meet with healthcare, pro uh, healthcare professionals ask mainly to the doctors, primary care physicians, and other physicians. I think their uh, awareness about benefits of exercise is important. Uh, we are discussing about the role of physiotherapists in different times. We are more than 2,000 physiotherapists in Bangladesh are underutilized. Uh, they are not in the mainstream healthcare system. And I think the only GK can provide other services to all of the countries, by thousands of villages. We only study only a few villages. So, we need to uh, make good communication between the physicians and physiotherapists. Uh, my question is, how we can uh, transfer your knowledge into practice where in our fragmented healthcare system, we never speak to each other. Like, we don't have any communication with our doctors, and doctors probably no communication with other professionals. So, if we want to make good healthcare system, uh, where we can uh, provide these services, not only the uh, incontinence services like uh, physiotherapists say that uh, people are uh, women over 60 or 70, they have other problems as well as like the musculoskeletal problem, they might have, they have uh, other genetic problems. So, uh, this physiotherapy exercise program can uh, benefit in different ways. But the main challenge is, is to make a good communication system uh, between the healthcare professionals and uh, tell the Patients that there is other service available. Not only the medicine or surgery is the only option. They can uh, simply our doctor has said that simple uh, solution can solve our biggest problems. So exercise is the one simple problem that can be prescribed to nearly all people. It can also reduce uh, blood pressure. So it has many many benefits if we can uh, provide this exercise uh, successfully. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Ibrahim Khalil, Assistant Professor and Head, Head of the Department, State College of Health Sciences, Labet Guru. This is a nice presentation actually, and I think it's the first uh, experimental study. We all know that in experimental studies, it's very tough. That I already discussed. But my request is to disseminate the size of interventions or study, the simple exercise. But it should be destined to the general population actually, so that's the protocol of the exercises. As because you know, exercise is beneficial for all groups of people. But what types of protocol actually maintain during the treatment? It is very important. As because as it is scientific seminar and it is scientifically proved, so it should be evidence-based. So I think that 
this dissemination should be published on mobile data Bangladesh and it is possible. I respect it, Dr. Jamrullah is a very initiative person, I think. And it will be started for uh, now all of the universities, schools, and it will be very beneficial for all over the people. And we already know that it is not only beneficial for the women, but also the men. So I think, again, the suspense of start should be continued. Thank you all of you. I am from the Institute of Technology at the University of Dhaka. I am working here as a research associate. I have a, a one query. Uh, if, if the study used uh, 16 pairs of relays uh, whether these uh, rural women uh, represent the whole Bangladesh or uh, most of the regions or uh, represents only uh, some of the regions, uh, whether the uh, population uh, whether the sample that represents the uh, whole country? At the villages were from um, four of the districts in, in Bangladesh. Representative of villages uh, under the care of GK. Obviously, the women who have been brought up in other villages without the benefit of uh, health care from the GK might be somewhat different. But within the population who studied, they were representative. Thank you for your answer. I have one more uh, question to uh, fetch out. Uh, whether the GK have, uh, has planned to implement uh, this intervention uh, throughout uh, your uh, healthcare centers uh, to the women or uh, it will be uh, stick to the piloting only? Yeah, thank you. Uh, about the sampling of the men's study, actually this sampling is done in such a way that we can represent some of Bangladesh. Uh, because during the first sampling, we have selected the villages in randomized cluster groups of the coastal area, of the northern part of our country, the central part of our country, and the southern part of our country. So we try to cover in such a way that we can represent the total Bangladesh. And also we have the data. We have the information of between 60 to 75 age groups and also according to the socioeconomic classifications. Because in GK, all the populations under the GK coverage have the socioeconomic classification in six groups. And we have that data with us. And we have already uploaded this study papers to GK website. Because this is not only the product of GK and the University of Alberta. We think that it is the product of all Bangladeshis. And everyone can claim the proudness of this study. So we hope that any organizations, any institutions come forward to us. We are gladly support because this will help to mitigate and minimize the miseries of the problem those who have faced the human incompetence. And yes, the questions about what GK will do. Because I am a freedom I fought for my country. And I'm coming from a village, a very poor village. Due to my education, I am in these positions. But I never forget my family, those who are in the village. And I am very gladly said that, yes, we will do. We will do what is possible for the betterment of the sufferers from the urinary incontinence, not only the urinary incontinence with the health problems. Because GK is what to do to support 
this poor and low income group peoples. These are the target populations of Manushastha Kendra. And Manushastha Kendra is for the whole country, even for the poorest and poorest section of the world. So, we'll do it. Okay. I'm proudly presenting myself as the coordinator of proposed uh, Manushastha Cancer Center. Everything is told here. I'm just uh, adding something. It should be, the approach should be community based participatory. If we can uh, bring out the natural leaders in the community, because our groups are working there, different danger groups, we can. Uh, transfer this skill and uh, uh, there is knowledge of the, there and if we can uh, empower them with this technology, not all, but who are interested and who are capable, then they will know who is suffering from this and it will be easier for the victims, uh, the patients to represent themselves that I have got that problem. So it can be disseminated, it can work better and this is for the future planning, how we can bring all the country in, the, in this manner. Uh, I'm not going to tell about other things, but it should be community based and participatory to help get the ultimate sustainability and ministry. Thank you. Asalaamu As Alaikum. Uh, this is Professor Dr. Omrani uh, Principal, CIP Shawar. Bangladesh Health Professional Institute. I am very glad uh, to attend here uh, to reduce the mobility and mortality among the elderly old men uh, to achieve sustainable goal in my country context. <coughs> this is one of the public health problem. But I just to comment two things. This is the important presentation perspective in my country. Uh, in collaboration with Dalmat University Canada and GK Bangladesh, I think uh, from the government policy level, either Ministry of Health or from the Director of the General Health Service, sometimes the representative from Director of General Family Planning, uh, if they were present, if they were, uh, they are present here, uh, uh, that is very effective uh, dissemination for us, for policy level. Uh, how to implement this type of study community? Because what is the community where the GK is working? I think there is some NGO that is working in related to help public health problem. Also, government has a lot of work here. In the family planning side, there is a WA and FWB and health side there is a health worker either she is female or male and also we know the, the, the lot of community building in the rural area if we share this type of study and implementation of work at community level at collaboration with health teleplanning department or other injury related to health problem then it will be covered that is my second. First thing, I think this is the initial stage. Uh, when next dissemination uh, will be conducted by DK or Alberta University, I hopefully request them to invite some of the authority from digital, digital planning. So the representative will be added. They sensitized and sharing this problem, public health problem for our senior citizens to attain the sustainable goal in my country in context to elderly care to reduce the mobility and morbidity. I am very much hopeful that I have 800 students of physiotherapy for diploma in and MC. I will provide a class for them. How can prevent the urinary incontinence <coughs> later for all the students? At least one class or today's workshop 
ये जीके या नामवर के यूनिवर्सिटी है पांच तो इसके अलावा प्रोफेसर्स एंड ट्रेनिंग थैंक यू आप मावर शिरा दिस्ता मिला इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ हेल्थ डेवलपमेंट यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ ताका हमें रिसर्च सेक्शन का स्टोर से इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ हेल्थ डेवलपमेंट से तो हमरा जानी थे बांग्लादेश में आउट ऑफ पॉकेट एक्सपेंडिचर नियर अबाउट 67 परसेंट तो एक तरह के इनोवेशन बांग्लादेश में आउट ऑफ एक्सपेंडिचर हमारा आउट ऑफ पॉकेट एक्सपेंडिचर के 
know, in, in your folder, we have a handout uh, and there will be some more information about where you can get the trial materials. Remember, this isn't just about pelvic floor exercises, it's about exercises, and it's about the group dynamics. Lots of benefits from simple exercise. So, essentially, if you want to implement it, do it as it was described in the study. That's probably fairly important to get success. Encourage people to do exercises at home. We talked about the importance of women. We should make sure that their men folk don't stop women exercising, and maybe they should join in. We should think about the home exercise card and how we use that as a reminder. And we should make sure that we train paramedics or the staff that we have used to implement the exercises appropriately and carefully because we need to deliver this as it was intended. We need to monitor the work of the paramedics to make sure the uh, intervention works uh, and make sure that we're doing it as it was originally described in the study. And of course you need to find somewhere in villages where women feel comfortable to exercise together which allows them to both exercise and to have the, the social benefits of those exercises. You heard the word snacks before. Incentives are good and providing snacks was a great incentive for attendance and will undoubtedly be of value. You should try and find the women one-to-one. -one. People are embarrassed about the incontinence. It's not something that people readily talk about. As so you should allow people to preserve their privacy and their dignity. You should probably offer the healthy bladder education component in the exercise classes. Fluids, good diet, avoiding constipation, really important. We should really think about maintaining attendance and trying to maximise attendance by keeping lists and following up with the women who don't attend to see if there's anything we can do to help. Maybe we should also evaluate what we're doing and certainly we have uh, the measures for benefit and we can use those in the field accordingly. You heard that our paramedics felt at least were quite important as it allowed them to focus attention on the incontinence and the treatment for it. So, there are full details of the exercises and all of the materials used in the study, and that this is the web address, uh, which isn't in your handout, you might like to write it down, um, on the GK website under publications and reports. The materials are clearly free to use, and we want people to use them. We'd also like, if you, if you would, uh, we could offer help by email or arrange uh, uh, support uh, from both the, uh, me at the University of Alberta and I'm sure um, that GK are, are very willing to, to assist. We would like you to let us know if you're going to use the materials and certainly to uh, help us monitor how the materials are used and also your results from any implementation you try. I hope uh, you are encouraged by it, there is a challenge, and I think there's a great potential for this kind of work. Thank you. Now, the highly respected Chief Guest of the Highlands, Dr. Gosendi Rahman, Executive Chairman, Power and Participation Research Centre, is requested to press the session with his most valuable opinions. Good afternoon, and I join everyone in congratulating GK and the University of Alberta for this heartbreaking uh, research, which of course has added not just to knowledge but to the whole potential intervention for a particular demography. I myself feel extremely disqualified on the technical subject per se, but. Uh, I think the, uh, there, there are many firsts that I see in this particular event today. One is that uh, it's very important uh, as the world has moved to the stage of SDGs from NDGs. It is very important that we also 
expand our discourse on health from merely the issue of uh, cure and mortality to the larger issue of well-being and prevention. And I think that's a very, very important social discourse beyond the specialists per se that we need to encourage and promote. That the discourse on health is a larger one and well-being is at the center of it rather than only care and mortality. So I think in that sense, the particular issue which has been uh, focused on here, the urinary incontinence, is a, extremely tied up to this whole issue of well-being. And I think it's also very really important that we bring to focus issues which touch millions of lives, but which are relatively under-focused in terms of discussion in terms of critical attention. And I think this is one of those issues which obviously is uh, significant for a significant range. We heard you know, about a third of the population we are mentioning, and that's not just in Bangladesh. Uh, Professor Wade was mentioning to me that it's same in Canada. So it's a larger problem. Uh, it's a large problem around the world, and it is a uh, not a minor problem, it's a large problem, and I think that's a very important issue to, uh, to bring to light, to really flag and bring out of the uh, shelf, so to say, for public discussion and public attention. I think it's also extremely important that, as Dr. Zafunga mentioned, that we obviously focus on low-cost solutions. But I think it's equally important to highlight the fact that low-cost solutions are not low-quality solutions. That's very, very important. Because the study has been, <coughs> has been done over seven months, as far as I understand. Uh, the field test itself, I mean, the study, of course, is a longer one. And uh, all the usual trappings of scientific research, randomized control trials, etc., etc., all have been gone through. So I think it is extremely important that we have, we sometimes have a mindset that local solutions are low quality solutions. This is not the case here. It wasn't the case with the antidiarrheal solution. It, it is also, as far as you can see, is not the case here. It is a extremely scientific solution that one is coming up with through appropriate scientific research and but the beauty of it is it is a extremely doable and a low cost solution but with all its professional it's not like you can just take two kichu korefala holo exercise tayo hoegaro that's not the way the whole thing has been suggested so I think that point is very important and I was uh, from the experts what we understood is that though you have focused on the particular demographic who are the big victims of this, elderly women, but the issue also touches all reproductive age women, that was I think highlighted, and the possibility of introducing preventive attention from the very outset, after first birth, etc. These are add-on benefits, as I can see, not just the direct benefits, there are multiple add-on benefits that one can think about here. I think the, uh, the issue of this new uh, health workforce sector, you know, the paramedics, uh, physiotherapists, these, they haven't got the amount of attention that we should have in the Bangladesh context. They are a critical part of the workforce ecosystem in the Bangladesh context. And I think a whole new area of application can open up uh, if we can, you know, highlight the, uh, the issues that were mentioned here. And it, again, there it's also actual skills. It's not like that these people will just come out with a, a one or two days of uh, attention. In fact, uh, I don't know, but down the line one can think how the government's initiatives of grassroots healthcare like community league, etc., how one can tie up these sort of initiatives with those public initiatives 
because they are recruiting people there who are not necessarily well trained. But if a new pool of health workforce at the rural level emerges, who can be tapped into government programs, there is a benefit for all to have, yeah, including the government programs. So I think that's a very important issue. I, I think I also feel the need to uh, highlight a point that knowledge like this, which was produced today, we talk of value chain when you talk of agricultural products, etc. But I think the knowledge value chain is also an equal issue that we have to keep in our focus. It is critical that the knowledge which is produced through a professional scrutinizable process like this one, and it must enter into the value chain. I am told that the uh, Lancet, uh, one part of it has shown an interest in publication of this uh, research. That's very important. I think we have, in Bangladesh, we have not given sufficient attention to the knowledge value chain. And therefore, we often remain at the uh, as takers from the global knowledge on health solutions as they are coming. And I think so, the knowledge value chain, and that's a question to, uh, that's a point to uh, researchers and practitioners here also, that we are innovating many things. They need also to transform into knowledge and enter into the value chain so that they become part of the global knowledge base. I think that's a very important one. Otherwise, uh, the benefits of innovation will be appropriated perhaps by others. One issue has come up is uh, the whole issue of how is this going to be scaled up. Multiple types of suggestions have been suggested, you know. And I think it's important uh, that I don't see that this event is the right place to think about the scaling of solutions. That's a subsequent discussion which must happen. And I think the scaling up pathways are multiple. We should be limited to, should GK take up the task of covering the entire Bangladesh on this? Maybe that's not the uh, remit of GK, but one can think of an ecosystem of services where GK plays a critical central part, for example, in providing the training for these orientation and training for the uh, the workforce, but also its own uh, programs, in its own program areas. But the scaling up part, I think, will have to be considered in its own right. And uh, we often think of a, one particular program scaling up all over Bangladesh. That's, now, that's not how it's going to happen, most likely. But if you can, uh, like how the anti-diarrheal response, you know, there was a knowledge which could even be appropriated at individual level. And here is a question actually as a technical question, that whether this group exercise, particularly looking at the follow-up study findings, whether at one point in time, the group methodology was, as I understood, was useful to break down social barriers and get women to feel comfortable. Whether the, the exercise regime whether it is at one point in time, it will become amenable to be done at individual level. And if it is so, then one can do further scaling up. You know, it, it is the scaling up will be made by providing the knowledge and the perhaps some of the workforce uh, whose availability is all around. So I think this scaling up is an issue which should be considered by all, uh, all sectors of the uh, and in that, I think it's so important that the, the 10 tips which are shown, the protocols, the critical steps, if those are available as knowledge product, then actually someone who is not in touch with, these, with your agency, but knows the knowledge, can self-replicate that program as well. So I think scaling up is not just by programmatic expansion. It is there are multiple pathways by which this scaling up challenge will have to be uh, settled. And I was very impressed by the fact that the study 
Uh, there is a, the low cost part of it is one part, but also there has been, in terms of actual research tools, there has been, I think, a very uh, interesting innovation. The 3DCR, for a population where literacy is not high, these are very, uh, shall I say, very, we, the word in Bangla is luxury, that it's a very appropriate tool innovation for the clientele at hand. And I think the, uh, the 3DCR, it's also a very, it's a, uh, it's a very interesting uh, signal to other researchers also to think in these terms that there are uh, innovate, and I think this is part of the knowledge base, this particular innovation that Tara was to the knowledge, how they managed to keep the record without putting it down on paper, uh, pen and paper. That itself is a very interesting research innovation, and I think as researchers, we feel quite excited that there's a whole field out there for such innovations to take place. Uh, And I think uh, in terms of the scaling up, again, someone mentioned, I think if you look at the anti-diarrheal program, how that is scaled up, individual providers have their programs, but I think the social campaign approach really played a huge role in how that particular solution awareness reached all parts of Bangladesh and around the world. So I think here a great challenge is codifying the knowledge product into replicable steps and already the 10 tips is a first primer there. But I think as a whole, this would also be a, uh, an issue. Even uh, videos, Bangladesh has become uh, addicted to those. The videos of uh, exercises could itself, you know, for a non-literate population, our people are very hooked to television and there are opportunities even for scaling up via those mediums. So I think there is a great uh, opportunity to address here and I want to end that uh, really salute to GK and on to Alberta University that uh, this is what we should be doing, that the health agenda is a universal agenda, we must bring to the center stage the broader, the larger health issues which affect millions rather than very specialized issues which, if, uh, which are problems of only a few. And I think problems like this, which have been not mentioned much, and particularly for women and elderly women in there, I think it's uh, extremely important. There was a time 30, 40 years ago where when Bangladesh didn't have sanitation, toilets were itself a major wooden issue actually, which was never discussed. Now we have broken through those barriers. We are even discussing the issues of menstruation. Uh, it's publicly being discussed now actually, and solutions are being found. <coughs> This one too is one of those taboo or less discussed issue and I think a new uh, light has been shown on some of the problems that affect the millions. And for that I think GK and Alberta deserve all our congratulations. Thank you. Now our respected chairman, Professor Abu Rashid Jodhuri, a trustee Gonosha Sukendro is to be is requested to hold his opinion and uh, 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 opinions and his term of conclusion. Hungry people do not listen to anything. They just ask for the food. So I am in that situation. <laughs> Uh, my first comment is, this is a very, very important 
study and uh, for the women who are suffering from urinary incontinence in the society. They are the neglected one, they are isolated within their family in embarrassing situations and as you heard that they also suffer from the repression. This is the beginning. There are a lot of expectations that has been expressed when we are discussing here. But if we see the heading, it is the managing of urinary incontinence in an elderly woman. That means woman who has already has got incontinence. Now the causes of in urinary incontinence is so many. I will take this opportunity to ask the senior gynecologists who are present here to look into that and think about it, how to address that causes of urinary incontinence. This is just the managing of the urinary incompetence so that they don't have the leakage. It may not be cured. Because when we talked about the third degree, second degree, third degree, you train for us. This is not that we are in the initial period where thinking about it. It may lead to those issues, but now the present issue is urinary incontinence. As has been reported in the report, that 30 percent women of more than 60 years of age are suffering from this incontinence. And there is also suggestions that we should you include the women who are in the reproductive age. That means this 30 percent will be more than 40 or 50 percent. Yeah. My request to the gynecological department and others who are concerned about the women diseases, how to reduce this 30% women who are suffering from incontinence or 50% women who are in the reproductive age is how we can reduce it, what can be done. So that's the first thing that we have to think about it and what should be the role of gynecologists and OBG society. Somebody was expressing that they will willing to work with the GK and I hope it it starts. Cost that has been come. Any program or any organization or even the government who has got a good healthcare delivery system, it can be part of it. And it has cost anything. I know that GK is giving this your physiotherapy training to the paramedics for the oldest people to reduce arthritic type of pain, pain of the body ache and etc. They can also be easily trained to this, to this exercise. The role of the physiotherapist as I see is giving training to the paramedics and to monitoring their training classes, which paramedics will give it to the village of That will be with very, very low cost program. It cannot be this, this study, which is this issues, cannot be implemented in an isolated program. <coughs> that will be used cost. But if it is within the healthcare delivery system at the community level, if it is included, I don't think it will cost that much. Very, very little about it. Uh, the other thing, there is another question comes from here, that why we don't invite the government officials? Because 
they are the it is the role of the government to give the health care to the population we have invited them. every time whenever jk has got any seminar or workshops or this manager we invite the government health officials to know we know that NGOs, even if we include all the NGOs in Bangladesh, how many people they will give service? 15, 20 percent? So overall responsibility of giving health care is the government. And if you want to change the policy of the government, we have to inform them. This is one way that we can invite them if they come. Unfortunately, I don't see anybody here from the government side or Minister of Health who has got interested. But we invite it. Then that's how we, we do it. This is this is study, today's uh, dissemination is just the beginning. When we do the scaling up, there will be Quarter discussions, quarter way of thinking. GK will think, we will help, we will get the help from the University of Alberta. That how, what are the next problems are coming and how it can be done. But this is a challenge. And working in GK for the last 40 years, I know that GK is ready to face, take this challenge. And if we can, if GK can help any other organizations, they will be obliged, they will be happy to do that. Because after all, the old domain of the GK area are not the only targets. It is the old woman or the woman who has got incontinence in Bangladesh. They are the target. So yes. It cannot be done alone, it has to be done all together. And let us take this challenge that we will do it together and we will try to scale it up as bigger as possible. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Chief Guest and uh, Chairman Sir. Thank you, uh, the research uh, team. And uh, uh, thank you, the Honorable Trustee, Dr. Jafrullah Sir. And uh, uh, last but not least, the wonderful audience. Uh, thank you, Honorable All. Uh, we are grateful uh, for the travel you took to participate in the seminar. Now all the respected guests are again invited and requested humbly to participate in the lunch. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> 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 I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to go to the next one.